I'd like to welcome everyone to today's webinar. It is 5 o'clock in Europe and 11 o'clock on the east coast of the U.S. Uh, we are getting starting on time. The webinar is entitled uh, Integrate Syngenic Mo Murine Models in Drug Development, Focus on Anti-Cancer Therapies which is being presented by Dr. Jean-François Mirjolet for design. Before start, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Christa Vitrouille, and I work in the business uh, department. First, uh, I'd like to address a few practical matters. This webinar will be available for all attendees. We will email you a link to this presentation. After the presentation, Dr. Mirjolet will answer a few of your questions. So if you have any, please add them in the control panel that you can see on the top of your screen. Uh, the attendee won't be able to see your question if you send them directly to Dr. Mirjolet or to myself. If you see the control panel, uh, just click on the top arrow of the top of your screen. If there are any questions, cannot be answered by the end of today's session, Dr. Lee will uh, respond to you by email. If you are experiencing technical difficulties, please send a message to the host and we will be able to assist you. Uh, let me introduce your speaker, Dr. Jean-François Jolet. Jean-François has been working at Onco Design for 11 years. Since his arrival at Onco Design, he has played a central role in the development of reconstituted human immune system mouse models, the KIMICE. He is now the technology, technology director at Onco Design, directly supporting our business development activity and working closely with our clients. Uh, to select the most appropriate studies designed for the, the evaluation of their therapies through preclinical pre studies. Having said that, let's begin the presentation. Uh, Jean-François, are you ready to begin? Yes. So thank you for joining um, this uh, um, uh, webinar regarding uh, Syngenic model and of this model in the preclinical development of new immunomodulatory compounds. So before I start, I just want to um, introduce a little bit of Onco Design for the one that don't know us uh, perfectly. So uh, Onco Design is a preclinical CRO uh, for uh, research in, uh, uh, and development in oncology. And, uh, we are located in Dijon, France, and we are in the field for now um, 19 years. Uh, we have set up various platforms to uh, evaluate and uh, um, uh, analyze the efficacy of anti cancer therapies, and this platform is uh, based on either um, uh, regular models, meaning Syngenic, uh, xenograft PDX model and uh, some in vitro experiments and this first platform is called PREDICT and we have uh, in addition to this um, evaluation platform uh, two technology platforms. The first one is dedicated to developing new uh, um, uh, generation uh, model PDX based and uh, model based on humanization of the mouse, so uh, to humanize the immune system, to humanize the liver, to humanize the skin, and the second technical platform is related to having all the um, um, uh, imaging support to analyze either the uh, tumor progression or the efficacy of compound, and this platform is called PharmImage. To, to that we have uh, from a uh, few years now um, uh, set up a, a medicine chemistry platform that are uh, specific for uh, developing new uh, small 
molecule kinase inhibitors, and there is two aspects, one dedicated to the uh, therapeutic application of these molecules and one dedicated to um, uh, use of this molecule as imaging tracers. But all this is not the topic of today, and I will uh, now uh, talk about uh, the use of transgenic model. And first, I will give you a short introduction. We'll present uh, what are the readout of efficacy in addition to evaluation of the tumor response. As we will be talking about uh, immune um, compound uh, compound that modulate the immune system. We need to have something related to uh, the uh, immune system in this mouse model. And then I will uh, uh, briefly introduce what um, kind of model we have and what are uh, the state of our collection. So first, uh, a slight introduction of mouse, a regular uh, syngenic mouse model. So this model is really interested as uh, this model starts quite 100 years ago. So we have a lot of information on this model. Uh, it's thing related to the mouse, so uh, it's easy to handle. Uh, it's easy to uh, propagate tumor uh, in this model as it's all um, uh, and uh, there is no uh, trouble of uh, immune rejection. So this model is quite easy, uh, and uh, it's uh, interesting. At it has all the interesting parts to um, create new compounds that interact with the um, uh, stroma of the tumor, the micro environment of the tumor meaning uh, um, immune system or even some um, stromals. An advantage of this uh, model is that the in phase, the mass phase by itself, it's uh, uh, at a low cost due to the use of uh, syngenic mouse. The drawbacks uh, is that it deals with mouse and not human. So, uh, you need first uh, validate the target expression, and if the mice did have some homologue of the target, and another one uh, disadvantage is that the selected model in Sengenic models is um, mainly growing fast. So sometimes it's uh, a too short window to address some immune rated function. Um, as I said, this model is quite easy, so we have a large um, uh, variability, um, uh, technical possibilities to uh, implant the tumor. So, spontaneously, orthotopically, IV, uh, intraperitoneally, uh, or even in the brain of this mice, and it's really uh, easy to perform. Uh, another aspect in this uh, Sangenic model, models that there is some chemically induced model, and um, these models are uh, more dedicated to understand the early phase of tumor development, and uh, more in the case of some uh, carcinogen are uh, um, uh, indicated in the initiation phase of this tumor. In addition to uh, the regular syngenic mouse model, now there is the ability to develop uh, the uh, immunocompetence model that suits the uh, needs of the therapeutic uh, compound, meaning that your targets are not the same or if your compound or antibody did address only the human uh, target, then you need to generate uh, uh, a gem model so to humanize the targets of interest within this uh, transgenic uh, mouse model. As before, uh, the uh, advantages of this model 
it's the normal the, the, the normal microenvironment and then the two most interaction, the in system and the endocrine system. And all of this is normal in, uh, into account that this is marine system and not the human one. So care of the discrepancy between human and mouse. I will not give you all the details regarding syngenic models uh, and the use of this model in the development of anti-cancer compounds. There is two nice uh, recently published papers uh, dealing with all these aspects, and the one is to uh, use the model that correspond to the need, and the other one is related to having the uh, first model for analyzing um, more related immunity and uh, um, the use of this model in case of uh, the evaluation of new immunotherapy. So the first readout of this model is sure to evaluate the toxicity of your compound and for that you, you follow as usual the body weight and you can do also blood numeration, biochemistry, uh, of liver function, uh, pancreas function, and, um, and others, you need to have something related to the tumor. So the, uh, uh, the evaluation of the tumor volume in case of a subcutaneous model, of orthotopic model, uh, what, um, uh, what are uh, the uh, location of the tumor, you need to have image support and for that we have all uh, um, all imaging facility in place to have a readout of the tumor uh, whatever the, the the site of the growing of the tumor and you call, can also uh, follow the tumor development using a serum biomarker if there is someone uh, something available for the particular uh, model the Another advantage of this um, syngenic model is that uh, in many cases there is um, spontaneous metastasis uh, development in order to be able to uh, follow uh, the uh, uh, metastasis spread out from uh, the primary tumor. Things uh, are also of interest uh, in addition to uh, classical histology analysis and uh, serum biomarker. In addition to this uh, old and easy out, uh, the development of uh, a new uh, compound related to uh, modulation of the immune system, then you need to set up something related to the analysis of the immune system within the mouse. And you that for um, uh, the blood periphery, but you n also need that for something really, uh, really related to the tumor or t to the draining uh, lymph node close to the tumor. And for that, uh, fax analysis is available in addition to uh, uh, immunohistochemistry, and you can do uh, easily some large phenotyping of uh, circulating immune cells or even uh, the uh, infiltrating uh, immune cells in the tumor. You can also use a multiplex assay to quantify the functionality of this immune system, and there are uh, now uh, many uh, tests available to quantify uh, the cytokine release, either by uh, Singulex ELISA or uh, Luminex platform that deals with uh, up to more than 40 uh, cytokines in the uh, uh, same uh, unique samples. And after having uh, uh, a first analysis of the phenotyping of the immune population, um, you may want also to have proof of functionality of the immune cells, and for, for that you can perform uh, assay based on uh, chromium release to operate uh, and qualify the uh, cytotoxic activity of NK or uh, T cells. 
you can also uh, analyze the proliferation of these uh, T cells using uh, uh, triated timidine incorporation assays. And uh, also you uh, may want also to uh, analyze the specificity of the response, and this can be achieved using uh, Elispot assays. I now give you some um, example of uh, 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 immunological endpoints that we have set up in the model. And the first one is uh, related to FOXP3 uh, quantification, and mainly in case of compounds that interact with um, the uh, uh, in-check points, so related to uh, CTLA4, PD-1, pd one therapies. And example is uh, the quantification of FOXP3 positive CD4 cells, and this was uh, done in the spleen of a mouse that have a CD26 um, orthotopic tumor. This uh, protocol is set up for the blood, the spleen, and now for a tumor draining lymph node and also tumor by itself, so you can uh, quantify the uh, level of FOXP3 uh, CD4 T cells within the tumor. First, uh, there is a dissociation step to uh, have a single cell suspension and then identification of the population of interest. So uh, CD45 positive uh, leukocyte, then the three T positive cells, then CD4 and CD8, and at the end, after a permeabilization step, you have the identification of the FOXP3 uh, positive T cells. You can also um, analyze the uh, level of microphages um, within the tumor, and this can be uh, obtained using uh, immunohistochemistry. Here, um, uh, the quantification of tumor associated microphages in a um, kidney uh, Renka model. And uh, this was uh, before treatment and um, after the treatment, you can see a really nice decrease um, of the world. So th there is a complete uh, um, uh, a lot of macrophages within the uh, treated tumor. So another way to analyze the response is to quantify uh, using PANER. So it's a fact-based method that um, helps us to identify really specific T cells. And uh, in that case, uh, it was a model where uh, mice were vaccinated, and then we have uh, follow the presence of these specific T cells within the uh, blood. And, uh, we can identify after several days after uh, vaccination the specific relation that is about 6 to 7 percent. And after uh, uh, days, we observe a slight decrease, but still significant uh, as compared to the control, the presence of positive uh, pentamer positive T cells. And finally, uh, an additional endpoint related to uh, the functionality of the T cells, and it's again uh, a model of vaccination. Uh, uh, the, the ESA is based on um, uh, analysis of the splenocytes uh, of mouse, and uh, these splenocytes were um, ex vivo restimulated with uh, the peptides that were used for the vaccination. And we have used various pools of peptides in order to analyze which one is the best to uh, generate uh, the specific response we want to, to obtain in the mouse model. And you can see two. Uh, 
peptide pools, a green one and the red one, in the call. And in the vaccinated uh, mice, you can clearly see that uh, there is a lot of uh, interferon uh, gamma producing uh, cells after uh, ex vivo restimulation in um, the case of having a rechallenge with the uh, green peptide and nothing um, when you uh, challenge the T cells again with the red one, meaning that uh, the best peptide to uh, achieve the uh, vaccination is uh, related is the peptide pool one and not the, 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 the red one. So I will now uh, focus a little bit more on uh, immune checkpoint inhibitors. So this is a really complex network between ADCs, so antigen presenting cells that could be uh, DCs, but also tumor cells and uh, the T cells. And this a real complete network between uh, the main signal, so it's uh, engagement of the tier TCR receptor by the HT class 2 uh, printing uh, receptor, and then there is co-inhibitory receptor, and there are a lot of uh, co-inhibitory receptor in the T cells, and also co-stimulatory receptor. have uh, selected all the compounds that are in clinical phase now, and the, the one that is now approved is, again, uh, CTLA4. This is an antibody that blocks the interaction of uh, B71 or B72 and avoids the activation of CTLA4, and there is now uh, Imumab that is approved for uh, melanoma um, from 2011, and a second one that is uh, in um, clinical phase three, so Tremumab. The target that is really um, of interest now is uh, PD-1. There is uh, two types of uh, um, compound, a monoclonal antibody, but also uh, fusion protein, and that blocks the interaction of two ligands, so PDL1, PDL2, uh, within the, uh, the receptor P1. Also, a compound that interact with uh, the ligands, so um, in order to block the interaction between PD1 and the receptor. There also uh, monoclonal antibodies that uh, block the B7 H3 uh, ligand, and also some um, agonist compound or agonist uh, um, E that will activate some uh, stimulatory signal and some antibody against CD137, uh, OX40, or CD27. Uh, Epidemumab is uh, um, already approved. There is two uh, nice papers that summarize all the preclinical work um, that, um, that one with this uh, CTLA4 uh, uh, antibody. One is um, uh, single treatment, so only CTLA4 antibody, and the second one is commission study. And these uh, two papers um, nicely summarize all the model and all the response that we can obtain um, um, uh, using a uh, syngenic mouse model. And the, um, the main um, uh, result is that there is cell line specific efficacy of this CLA4 antibody. There is uh, sensitive model, um, like um, glioma, SMA560, like uh, beta MB49 or fibrosarcoma, 
SA1N model. There is also some model where um, ipilimumab is completely ineffective, like B16 uh, melanoma, EL4, um, Lima 41 breast model, or um, even the MC38 uh, colon carcinoma. And a model with pure response like uh, the CD26. There is no real um, uh, rules that dictate the response uh, of this model uh, toward ipilimumab treatment. However, there is mainly two uh, key uh, uh, factors uh, of response. The first one is related to the tumor by itself, and in case um, uh, of an intrinsic immunogenicity of the tumor, more, we do uh, observe a nice response uh, and a nice sensitivity of the model to what's meant with ipilimumab, and also some um, experimental uh, details that helps to observe uh, a response, and this is more related to um, the tumor burden um, upon administration of the treatment, meaning if you want to observe something, you need to start with uh, a low level of uh, tumor uh, or small volume of tumor in order to uh, avoid uh, establishment of an immuno uh, um, uh, inhibitory environment related to uh, the uh, large tumor. Starting um, uh, frequent evaluation um, of immune checkpoint related therapies, you need to uh, have the right uh, therapeutic material. You are working with mouse models, so you need to uh, be sure that uh, the target is hit by your compound, or you need to develop a surrogate. Uh, uh, compound that will uh, interact with the mouse antigen. As a matter for the CLA4 uh, uh, targeting antibodies, there is uh, various uh, mouse clones available uh, that exhibit various uh, levels of efficacy in this preclinical model. Having um, uh, selected the antibody, you need to uh, choose the right tumor model. It could be a uh, regular syngenic model if you have uh, the appropriate mouse surrogate, surrogate antibody. It needs to be a gem model if you want to test the human uh, therapeutics in this model. And Example for, for again the uh, development of ipilimumab. Um, the uh, author has developed a gem model where uh, there is a cow for mouse CTA4 receptor and uh, 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 a cain for the human one, and this was um, uh, set up for um, in the uh, C. Uh, 57 black 6 uh, strain of mice in order to have uh, tumor bearing animals, so in that case, bearing the MC38 colon adenocarcinoma. And after having selected the antibody, the model, you need to think about having the uh, appropriate readouts, meaning uh, it's compound that will interact with the immune system. So Tumor volume is something important, but you, you need to prove, to demonstrate that the mechanism of action is um, uh, related to uh, the incels, so you need to be able to analyze the immune infiltrate and the immune function in this model. So I will now um, uh, switch to uh, the Oncodesign onco collection for Syngenic mouse model and I will spend a few minutes uh, describing 
some particular model and some uh, kind of um, readout we have set up in this model. So we have a huge platform of Stangenic mouse model. I will not present all the model uh, today, so if you have questions, don't hesitate to, to ask me. Um, we saw two more model based on cell line on more fragments. We have model in mouse, in rats, so some models are uh, subcutaneous or some are autopically uh, injected. We have a uh, compound, a very compound in this model, and a compound in combination with uh, localized radiotherapy. We have uh, so a lot of model and some model based on uh, chemically induced tumor. And I want to briefly uh, discuss some of them. So the first one I've chosen is the uh, 41 breast uh, carcinoma model. And this model is really interested as uh, upon uh, injection of the um, tumor cells within the um, mammary pad. Uh, um, synchronous development of metastasis in both the lung and the river. So we can uh, show the uh, primary tumor and also analyze the uh, metastasis um, uh, burden uh, at the same time. So you do not need to have to uh, uh, um, uh, um, to uh, uh, take a tumor in order to uh, wait uh, additional weeks for the metastasis development. This model is fully uh, synchronous between primary tumor growth and uh, uh, metastasis development. This model is sensitive to doxorubicin, so you have here those response of the tumor volume. And you also have, uh, I said, the uh, uh, metastasis level, so around 20 uh, uh, met spots um, at the end of the study, so around 25, 30 days after injection of the primary tumor cells. This is um, uh, visually uh, uh, identified uh, met, and for the liver, you, you need 